Johnson. He's down to the goal line. He's over. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time any day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below, maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. But at least anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Well, we made it through this past round of playoffs and the Super Bowl and the season's all over and everything. And Eli Manning's record still stands now for how much longer. But as of right now, his record still stands. Now, that's the passing record. He threw for 1,219 yards in the 2011 playoffs. That's when we went to Super Bowl 46. We beat the uh, Patriots 21-17. to um, You know, so basically he averaged like, you know, 305 yards a game. You know. Uh, he threw for 277 yards versus the Falcons, uh, 330 versus Green Bay, 316 in overtime versus uh, the 49ers, and 296 yards versus the Patriots in Super Bowl 46. This average 305 yards a game. So, I mean, just a real nice, nice number. You know, 300 yards. But, you know, uh, you know, even though he, he had all those yards, you know, basically he was kind of, he, he, he kind of had to do that in order for us to wind up winning. The Giants had 172 yards rushing versus the uh, the Falcons. Now the Falcons usually never have much of a good defense. And, you know, it goes, kinda, it goes to show you we had 172 yards rushing against them and 277 yards passing. And we beat them 24-2 in the first game of the play, round of the playoffs there, so. But, I mean, after that, you know, we only had 95 yards rushing against Green Bay. We only had 85 yards rushing against San Frank. They had a tough defense. And we had 114 yards in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. And, a matter of fact, I mean, you know, back then the Giants, I mean, tough, I mean, a tough pill to swallow. But, I mean, that was kind of like the beginning, like the end. I mean, basically, every, you know. We've had a hard time, kind of, maybe not every year, but most every year since 2011 or so, we've kind of had a hard time running the ball. I mean, it's just kind of the same old, same old. In 2011, the Giants were dead last in the NFL. They had 1,427 yards rushing in the whole league. I mean, it's a 16-game schedule, right? I mean, they averaged like about 90 yards a game running the ball. I mean, and they were dead last. They averaged 3.5 yards per carry. We had Danny Ware, we had DeMond Bradshaw, we had Brandon Jacobs, we were 3.5 yards per carry. I mean, <laughs> that's sad. Really, really sad. Now, the, um, the offensive line that kind of carried us through 2007, even 2008, we, we, had, we had the best team in the NFL until... Uh, Plexico Burr shot himself in the leg at that nightclub, and then after that, basically, our season kind of fell apart. After that, our offense kind of <laughs> went down a dumper. But, um, we, you know, we had the, the good offensive line, you know, in the you know, early to mid you know, 2000s, you know. But by the time 2011 came around, things were starting to change a little bit. Rich Seibert, he was gone. Uh, Sean O'Hara, he was gone. Kareem McKenzie, he was 32 years old. And 2011 just happened to be his last season in the NFL. I mean, what a way to go. I mean, won a Super Bowl in 2007. You get to the, two, uh, the Super Bowl in 2011, you win it, and you retire. What a way to go, Kareem. <laughs> very, very good. Uh, David Deal, he was 31. He only played two more years after that. Chris Snee, he only played two more years after that, too. So, I mean, you know, they, they, you know they, the line, we had uh, Will Beatty was the, uh, the, uh, the, the the left tackle. Kareem McKenzie was the right tackle. But we had Boss. He took over for, uh, for uh, 
Sean O'Hara at center. You know, so I mean, you know, Beatty was was okay. You know, left tackle. Boss was all right. You know, nothing super special. But I mean, I said, but I mean, even you know, those guys, they, they didn't have any time to gel because I said, but Kenzie, he retired, and like two years later, uh, Deal was gone, Snee was gone. You know, what I mean, so. And we've just been kind of in flux ever since then. I mean, just we haven't had a haven't had a, a good, real good, solid offensive line for, I guess, what, 10, 11, 12 years now. But um, so it was it was kind of basically up to the passing game. It was up to Eli Manning. It was up to Victor Cruz, uh, Hakeem Nix, Mario Manningham. It was up to Jake Ballard. He was our tight end. Unfortunately, sadly for him, he. Um, he tore his ACL in the um, the Super Bowl, and he and he came out, and it was in the second half he came out, and he never played it down ever again for the New York Giants. He you because you, you you had a I mean because the game was played in like I guess it was February, so you know he needed an X amount of time to recover, so he he was out the whole next season, 2012. He played. Half the season, I think, in 2013 for the Cardinals, and he wanted to retire because he, his body, you know, because of the injury, and he said he just didn't, you know, life after football was far more important. A healthy life after football was far more important to him than, than playing football. So he didn't want to jeopardize his health for the rest of his career. So he kind of called it a, a, a career, you know, after the 2013 season. It was a shame. He, he was a decent player, decent player. Um, but apparently again, he tore his ACL, and he wasn't sure if it was just something wrong with the knee or exactly what it was. But then he wound up, he was like running up and down, like the sideline, trying to loosen up or, or, or you know, see if he can go or whatever. And apparently he collapsed. You know, he couldn't, had a hard time getting back up or whatever. And unfortunately, that was it for him. But at least he got a Super Bowl ring out of it. Uh, our, one of our other, you know, he didn't have a big year. It was Bear Pasco. I don't know if anybody remembers him. So we even had one of our receivers was even on this team. He had one reception. He had three passes thrown his way. He only played in a couple of games. But he had one reception for seven yards. It was Brandon Stokely. Now, if you remember, I don't remember, remember it's Brandon Stokely. But in the 2000 Super Bowl, when we played the Ravens, Brandon Stokely was on the Ravens. Brandon Stokely caught the first touchdown reception. It was like a 38-yard reception, I believe it was. That was the first touchdown in the game. And the Ravens went up 7-0, and they were off and running. Uh, so we even had Brandon Stokely. I said he only caught one pass. But, I mean, yes, we had a, we had a nice, you know, um, uh, you know, nice bunch of weapons. Uh, the tight, I mean, I mean, Jake Ballard was nothing, I mean, you know, super duper special. He had some nice hands. He was a decent blocker. But, you know, he, he wasn't like a, a super threat like, you know, Jeremy Shockey was or anything like that. Uh, so we had a nice attack. You know, Ahmad Bradshaw had 34 receptions. Danny Ware, one of our other uh, running backs, he had 27 receptions. Mario Manningham went up with 39 for the year. You know, of course, he caught that one in the Super Bowl down the sideline. That was the biggest one of his career. Wow. He had two big ones. He caught the one in, in uh, against the 49ers. And, you know, he, he like, you know, it was like a 20-yarder. He went up and caught it. He got nailed and all that, held on to it. But the one in the Super Bowl was probably even bigger than that. Uh, Jake Ballard uh, said he had 38 receptions for the year. Bear Pasco, I think he only had like 12. You know, but our two big guys were that year, 2011, were Hakeem Nix. He had 76 receptions for 1,192 yards, 15.7 yards of reception. He had seven touchdowns. Then we had the Salsa King, Victor Cruz. He had 82 receptions, 1,536 yards receiving, 18.7 yards of reception. He had nine touchdowns. One of his biggest ones was the game when we played the Jets. He had a 99-yard receiving touchdown in that game. Very, very special. So the Giants were going to wind up winning the Super Bowl. They were going to have to do it passing the ball. It was going to have to be a la Eli. And if Eli was going to set any type of a record, right, as far as, you know, he wasn't looking to set the record. He just happened to do it. But, I mean, he was, you know, he was going to have to do it. And um, he was going to need all four games. 
I mean, if the Giants had a bye the first week and then they played three games, he'd only have like eight, nine hundred yards passing. You know what I mean? So he, if he was going to do it, he was going to need all four games. And he, you know, he did all four games he did. He played all four games and he had 1,219 yards passing. Now, the past off season, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just going to be a matter of time before somebody winds up breaking the record. But this past off season, Patrick Mahomes was only, was only all right, after two games, he was only 438 yards from breaking Eli Manning's record after only the first two games. He had 404 yards passing versus the Steelers and 379 yards versus the Bills. So he had almost 800 yards passing after two games. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. So if he would have wound up winning the championship game and then going, you know, to the uh, to the Super Bowl, almost guaranteed he would have broke the record because he only needed like 400 yards, a little over 400 yards. So he would have had two, three hundred probably in the championship game, you know, or what, you know, and he would have had probably a couple hundred, two, three hundred in the Super Bowl, and he probably would have blown Eli Manning. He might have beaten Eli's by like 100 or 200 yards. You know, he would, he might have had almost 1,400 yards after four. I mean, just this absolutely just crazy. Um, and I. If you're said, so the one thing is, I mean, as far as with this record, right? If you're a good quarterback and you're on a good team, it's kind of tough to break the record because you're only going to play in three games. Because if, if you're saying, yeah, if your record, you're like, I mean, like with Aaron Rodgers, I mean, if he would ever win a championship game to go to the Super Bowl, he'd still have a hard time. Why? Because he, you know, you, you got the best record, you get a bye. So now you got to you got to average over 400 yards a game. You got to average 406 yards a game passing for three games. And it's uh, so, I mean, to, to break the record that way with just three games in the playoffs is very, very difficult. You know. So, I mean, that's why if you're going to break this record, you got to, you know, you got to have all four playoff games there. So, obviously, it's becoming, you know, more and more of a passing league. So, basically, it's just, you know, kind of a matter of time before someone winds up breaking the record. Uh, Matthew Stafford. This uh, past season, you know, he fell just 32 yards short. You know, he played in all four games, had phenomenal. You know, he won the Super Bowl, but he was 32 yards short. Um, Patrick Mahomes had 1,057 yards in only three games. You know, I mean, that was, he averaged 352 yards a game. I mean, you know, see, he was, what, 62 yards short? You know, so, I mean, you can see if he, if he would have – Got to the Super Bowl, he probably would have had at least 300 yards pass, and he probably would have beat Eli's record by like maybe 250 yards. He might have had like 1,450 yards after four games. I mean, just blew Eli, you know, record away. I mean, as I said, it's just a matter of time. Joe Burrow wound up 114 yards short. I mean, he had a phenomenal, you know, uh, playoff run there. He was 114 yards short. So basically, the all time list. All right, you know, goes kind of goes as follows, right? Eli Manning in 2011 with those four playoffs, all right, he had 1,219 yards passing, all right, and they won the Super Bowl. Uh, Matthew Stafford, right, 2021, all right, he had 1,188 yards. Yeah, they won, and once again, yeah, they won the Super Bowl. So if he had 32 more yards passing, he would have brought, he would have, uh, uh, he would set the record, you know. And it's, it's, it's no super duper record or nothing like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. He won the Super Bowl, maybe. So I'm sure he's pretty happy with that. Then you got Kurt Warner in 2008. He had 1147 yards pass, and they lost in the Super Bowl to the Steelers, 27 to 23. Yeah, so he was only like you know 72 yards short of tying the rack, 73 yards, you know, of, of beating the rack. So he was close. The thing it was in 2008, the Giants were the Giants went on the road in 2008. They beat the Steelers on the road. That was a good game. I remember watching that game. Good, tough game, boy. Beat the Steelers on the road, and they beat the Cardinals on the road. Both those teams went to the to, to the Super Bowl. So I'm not saying the Giants would have won the Super Bowl. I mean, nothing, but I mean. They would have had a good chance of going back to the Super Bowl and, and beating beat maybe the Steelers, you know, because they won they were on the road, 
They beat both those teams. They had a great team. They had a great record. And, and just, I don't know, as soon as Plexico shot himself in the leg and he couldn't play anymore, their offense took took a big hit. Because you take him out of, the, out of the equation and, you know, the, you know, yeah, uh, they, I guess the defense were able to just clamp down. I mean, the Giants had a good run in attack that year, and it, but I'm saying it was like with you had Tumor, you know, on one side, you had uh, you know, Plaxico on the other, you had, you had, you had Mont Bradshaw, you had Brandon Jacobs running the ball. But once you take Plaxico Burris out of the equation, you know, they, they, they had a hard time, just a hard time scoring after that, and. And they want to lose, I believe, to the Eagles in the, in the, in the playoffs that year. But uh, but it, Joe Flacco, he was in fourth. 2012, he had 1,140 yards. And they won the Super Bowl. They beat the 49ers 34-31. Uh, that, was, that was another good Super Bowl. And then you got Tom Brady. All right, Tom Brady, 2016, he had 1,137 yards passing. And they wound up when it's they won Super Bowl fifty one. They that was the year they beat the Falcons, thirty four to twenty eight in overtime. But he did he did that. He did eleven hundred and thirty seven yards passing in only three games. Right? So uh, he was eighty two yards short and only in three games if he had eighty three more yards. I mean, so if he played a fourth game, he would have blew it out of the, you know, Eli's record out of the water. The first playoff game um, they beat the Texans 34 to 16, and he had 287 yards. Yeah, nothing big. But against the Steelers, they beat the Steelers 36 to 17 in the championship game, and he had 384 yards passing. Then when they went into the Super Bowl, and obviously they were down 28 to three to the Falcons, and somehow the Falcons blew it. Oh my God! But so basically, when you're down 28 to three, you're not you know running. Let's establish the run, and then we'll worry about trying to score some points. No, you're throwing the ball. <laughs> so that's what he did. He had 466 yards passing in the Super Bowl. So in three games, he had 287 yards, 466 yards, and 384 yards in just three games. He was only 82 yards short of uh, tying the record. I mean, so, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's what you can tell. I mean, but it's extremely difficult to break the record. With uh, just three playoff games, you know, realistically, you're going to need four. But I mean, the, the way the guys are, they, it's such a passing league now. I mean, with some of these guys, I mean, with Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and you know Aaron Rodgers. I mean, whoever winds up playing like in four playoff games, it's just a matter of time before Eli records, uh, Eli Manning's record goes. But but it's just nice knowing for at least at least 10, 10, 11 years or so that Eli uh, Eli Manning. His name is still in the record books. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!